Hello ladies and gentlemen. This time we are going to be working on chapter 7 which is work, power, and energy. And specifically in this video we're going to talk about work. Now the, when we say work in physics there is a very distinctive and definite definition. Uh, work is defined as the force that is applied through a distance. This is my equation for work. Work is force times displacement. Uh, put a box around that one, write that one on your formula sheet, you're definitely going to need that. Work is measured in something called joules. Force, of course, is our old friend Newton's, and the displacement must be in the same direction that the force is applied. So if this fellow is pushing on the car with so many Newtons of force, and the car moves x distance, that's the distance we care about as long as the displacement is going to be in the same dimension or plane as the force applied, we can calculate work with force and displacement. Now, in order to do work, you must have motion. There must be motion in order for physics work to be done. And this gets really confusing because I know that as you do your physics homework, you work really, really hard. Um, it's a lot of mental energy. It's a lot of stress and strain on your eyes and your back and your body. But the challenge is it's a very small amount of work in the physics definition of it because physics definition of work is force through a distance. So what are you applying a force through a distance? Well, you're moving your pen, you're flipping some pages, you're tap tapping some keyboards, but the amount of work you do here is very little. You have to physically move something to do physics work. So if this person pushes on this car with a force and it moves it through a displacement of x, physics work is done. If this group of people stress and strain with a humongous force, but they are able to move it not at all, well, force times zero is zero. And work requires that a displacement occur. So trying to move something, pushing on something uh, without any result um, is going to give you zero physics work. The metric unit of work and the metric unit of energy is called a joule. And the joule, spelled J-O-U-L-E, but it is pronounced joule as in jewelry, uh, is abbreviated with capital J. And it is named after a fellow named James Prescott Joule. And James Prescott Joule was a uh, brewer. He made beer for a living in England, and there's not a lot to do while the beer is fermenting. So he had a laboratory in the basement of the brewery, and he did a lot of work with energy and the laws of conservation of energy. One joule is a derived unit. Now, derived units are combo meals. They are combinations of basic units that are used so often that they get their own name. Now, the definition of a joule comes from the equation, work is force times displacement. So if you take force units, newtons, times displacement units, meters, one newton meter equals one joule. If you break a newton into its constituent parts, one newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and then multiply it by that second meter, you get those. Kilogram meter squared per second squared, equal one joule. When we start doing problems, um, you are going to sometimes end up with newton meters, sometimes with these, but then they need to be transformed into joules to be work, or excuse me, work or energy units. How much energy is a joule? It's a really very small quantity of energy. Um, a typical example that's given is that if you have a small apple and it is raised by one meter, like a nice little 100 gram apple, that is one joule of energy. So it's, it's not a lot. One joule is not going to power your car very far, but uh, we will use these a lot. When we start talking about work, there always must be an opposing force. So remember, you have to have motion in order for work to be done. But the force, we're talking about the force that you are working against. 
to make the object move. For example, when this person lifted this rock, what force is pulling in the opposite direction? Sure, that's force of gravity. When this person climbs the stairs, what force is pulling in the opposite direction? Gravity. So if you lift anything, the force that you are working against is the force of gravity. Okay, what happens if you slide something? Uh, as this person is pushing this automobile along the lane, the force that is opposing motion in the opposite direction is going to be friction. So whenever you slide something, you're working against frictional forces. If you want to try this, push on your coffee cup or whatever is handy and just give it a gentle little push. You are doing work against the force of friction, which is in the opposite direction. All right. What happens when you squish something or stretch something like a rubber band or you squish a rubber ball? There always has to be a force you're squishing against or pulling against. What is it with this kind of material? Well, this one is harder to describe, but you've played with rubber bands and, and rubber balls in the past, I'm sure. So what is working against you? This is the internal elastic forces of the material. Now those elastic forces in the material are based on the chemistry. They are based on the internal bonds within the chemicals that make up elastic materials. And you're actually working against these elastic, elastic forces. You pull a rubber band and you're actually storing energy in that pulled state. And you know because if you let go, it's going to snap back and it's going to go ouch. When we calculate work, we only want the force and displacement that are parallel to each other. They have to be in the same direction. They have to be in the same dimension. Here's what I mean. Let's say that we are pulling on a box with a certain force at an angle above the horizontal. And by doing this, this box moves through some sort of a displacement x. So how much work is done? Well, we don't use the whole force. We just want the component of the force parallel to the motion. So in this situation, the work done is going to be the force, which is my hypotenuse. This is my adjacent side. So times the cosine of theta, then times my displacement x. All right, what happens if you are walking up a set of stairs. If you walk up a set of stairs, you always go back to what are you working against? Well, you're working against primarily the force of gravity. Is there a little friction involved as you're going up and down stairs? Well, there better be, otherwise you're going to slip and fall. But most of the work is actually being done against the force of gravity. So we only care about the component of the displacement in the direction of the force. And the component of displacement here is this vertical displacement x. So if I know theta, the work done in this situation will be the force of gravity times x, which is going to be this total length, the total length times the sine of theta. Because in order to get x, we have to use sine because it's the opposite side. Work is how we enter the whole concept of energy. And energy goes in a big circle. There is a, always a continuous transformation of energy day after day, moment after moment. Um, so for example, this fellow did some work on this object, exerted a force of gravity, lifting it so far, and he now has energy stored in the position of the rock. If the rock is let loose, energy can come back out of the rock. Let's say he drops it and it steps on his little toe. Um, if this thing drops on his toe, what's going to happen? Well, the energy is going to go back into motion and the energy can now do work on his toe. This rubber band work is done when a force is applied through a distance to actually stretch it 
if the rubber band is let go, then the energy that was stored in the stretched rubber band can do work on this hand and it is going to go ouch and the energy comes back out again. So energy is constantly changing forms and we're going to spend a lot of time talking about a variety of energy transformations. Let's see if you've got this. Now calories is a form of energy and my question is this, which kind of exercise is going to burn calories faster, burn energy faster? If you are in the gymnasiums on the treadmill or if you are climbing stairs? Well, in this one, the work you are doing, you are exerting a force. What are you working against? Friction, yeah. And when you're on the treadmill, you can usually adjust how big the frictional forces are times the distance you travel. This lady, as she climbs the stairs, what is she working against? What force is pulling against her? Primarily the force of gravity. And as she climbs the stairs, that she's going to be working against gravity. And because gravity typically is a much bigger force than force of friction, you and I know, if you've ever exercised, that this is going to burn calories faster. You're going to be more pooped quicker, um, but you can actually burn calories both ways. It just depends upon speed and how you want to go about doing this. All right, that will do for work. We'll come back with more later.